So Salim, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And Wumpini Lafu. Thank you very much. Okay. I know you guys are, um, you all have the parties you support. Um, Salim, you are from the NDC side. Wumpini, who recently found his way to MPP. <laughs> I, I don't know, it, that was part of Uber Discovery and that's all about the science. Um, students, my mom, on Yemen, the scientists, and you, so no comments. Uh, no comments. Okay, <laughs> so, um, what I wanted to discuss, we can mix the Ghana in English, no problem about that one. So, um, parliamentary candidates, we have um, so far had nine parliamentary candidates for MPP, right? Or is it eight? Northern region, yeah, I think yeah. it's nine. nine, and NDC2 has nine candidates. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to confirm that for now. Okay, yes, I know your party's position, so alright. So, but what no one What I want us to look at is um, the possibility of development in the next four years, given the candidates we have we have currently. So let's start with um, let's start with um, this thing. the obvious one, Tamalisa. <laughs> Um, Salim, what are the possibilities of development when it comes to um, Tamar South, that's um, Honorable Harun Idris, minority leader? Um, I think usually when I'm asked this kind of question, I would like to take a step backwards. Okay. Is it the duty of the MP to bring development? Development. Okay. So, what is the duty of the MP? I think primarily is to make laws. Okay. Primarily it's is to make laws. Because if you look at the position of the MP, he or she doesn't have access to resources to be able to drive the kind of development the constituency will need. All right. What percentage of the common fund goes to the MP? somewhere four percent i think okay the remaining 96 or 97 Seven. remains with the uh, district, district assembly okay so so in that case in that case why do mp make promises because most of them have made promises for the first time some even launched manifestos um for for their constituency uh, what I want to get is, is it that the last for power or the quest for power, should I say, that is making them make this promise? Because people outside think that MP is responsible for development. We've seen even incoming MPs constructing roads. We've seen it. Uh, we've seen um, incoming MP promising and um, this incumbent MPs also promising. So, like, if people out there want to actually get, yeah, you have to tell that MP will make laws. Primarily, that is yeah. That's what it's That's primarily. Be. So why are we? Why are our MP making promises? I think, largely, it's due to two main reasons. Okay. They tell the people what they want to hear. Yeah. One. And then two, most of those uh, MPs, they have hopes of becoming ministers. Okay. So they make those promises based on those hopes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So if I promise to maybe construct a road, I have the hope that maybe if my government form, if my party forms government, okay. I'll be a minister and by virtue of my position as a minister, I can, I can, I will be able to right. construct those roads. Okay. I promise to. All right. All right. I think it's getting clearer. Um, we'll be have something to add on this? Yes, um, let me start from your first question. Yeah. I think you asked about uh, Tamale South yes. and then he said oh. So let's look at it from the constitutional point of view. Okay. What does the constitution require MPs to do? And we also have to consider what do the MPs tell the people when they go to campaign. Okay. So in order to analyze, you have to look at those two. We do not care whether the people do not care whether the constitution is asking you to construct rules or not. If you come to tell us that you are going to construct rules, you are we going do, to do this, you are going to do that, that, you do it. that is what we expect you to do. Okay. That is what you have told us. 
and only a few people have an understanding of what MPs are supposed to do per the constitution. Okay. So it looks like I've, I've never heard any MP campaigning based on what the constitution requires them to do. You understand? <laughs> oh yes. So the votes, I've never heard any MP saying that, oh, vote for me, I'm going to parliament to make laws for you. Yeah. You understand? We, we have seen a drastic change in how politics span out, especially at the parliamentary level. Yeah. And when you look at the shocking results of people losing their seats, you understand that it is not just about making laws, the people are taking a different uh, perception about what MPs are supposed to do. Okay. And those very perceptions are fueled by the MPs themselves. You understand? Yes. You come and tell me this is what I'm going to do. Because of that, I vote for you. So I expect you to do that. But don't you think Salim has a point? Yes, he has a point. Yeah, his point is valid. Yes. Okay. But we cannot access their performance without putting into consideration what they tell the people. people. Okay. Whether they tell them just as you know to, to deceive them or not, it has to be taken into consideration. All right. What I but and look you can see that some of the MPs are actually, you know, performing. I don't know where they are getting their funds though, <laughs> but they are somehow getting money. Oh you, know, you, you don't money. want to know. No, I don't know how they are getting the money. Are you sure you don't know how they are getting the money? Of course. How? How do I know? Okay. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> how do I know how they are getting the money? Uh, you, you are a politician now, so I believe you should know how, how your people are getting the money. No, I don't know. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm not a politician. Oh, no, you don't have to be a politician to know something. No, you should be part of the game to know how it goes, right? Ah. Okay. All right. So, so um, let me come back to Salim here. Now we are establishing that you have to campaign based on that the constitution, right? On the duties of a um, parliamentary candidate, not go in and make promises that you know you can fulfill. But the question now is: Let's go by the constitution in Tamil South. What are some of the policies and laws, right? If I'm if I'm right, laws. That you think the MP who doubles as the minority minister of the seventh parliament of the fourth republic, what do you think are some of the policies he should do or implement or force to implement for Tamil South to um, to fuel development? If you if you look at his primary responsibility, yeah. as far as the seventh parliament is concerned. Yeah. He has more than performed. Okay. He's an outstanding uh, member of parliament, right. a great legislature, yeah. legislature. He's done very well at that. And then when you come to the development bit, I think, though not his primary responsibility, yeah. he has been able to chuck some success in that regard. Okay. Talk about uh, rural, rural uh, electrification, construction of some roads, building of some schools. I think he has done well. Yeah. One area I would like him to focus more is um, human development. Yes. Okay. But sometimes, in, in putting expectations on them, you have to take a look at the kind, the nature of the constituency. Okay. Right. If you take Tamale Central for a, for example, Tamale Central is an urban constituency. Yeah. Most of the communities in Tamale Central don't have needs for roads, electricity, yeah. Yeah. portable drinking water. So the MP for Tamil Central, in a way, will be able to focus on uh, the human development. Yeah. But you go to Tamil Cent uh, South, South yeah. somehow a rural constituency. If you go to most of the communities, their immediate need is not for a child to go to school. To school yeah. They will tell their immediate need is electricity, water. portable drinking water, yeah. motorable road. road. So, in assessing or placing like those kind of uh, what you expect them to do, you have to take a look at the nature of the constituencies okay. they come from. Okay. And looking at the nature of Tamale South, I think so far Haruna has been able to blend the two, but I think he need to do more on the human. Okay, all right. Um, still on Haruna, mm -hmm. do you think, based on what Salim said, he has done so well um, in the legislature aspect and also um, a bit of the development? Um, when it comes to his role in parliament, I don't think anyone can uh, dispute what uh, a great legislator he is. Okay. But coming to the details of his work 
I mean, his constituency, I do not have the you know, full facts to speak on that. Okay. But what I can say is that the best people to access or assess his performance would be his uh, constituents, yes. the members of his constituents. Okay. And they've always shown that he has done well. So we can only look at his, uh, I mean, election results, results yeah. to say that the people are satisfied with what he is doing. doing. Okay. That is why they continually come out in their numbers yeah. right. to vote for him. Okay. As to the fine details of what he has done, I do not have that. Okay. But I would want to believe what uh, Salim, Salim has said. Okay. But when it comes to Parliament, I think that he has contributed so much and then he is someone everybody looks up to uh, with his posture and everything. Okay. Yeah, I think he has, he has been doing very well in Parliament. All right. Yeah. So I'll still stick to you. Let's come to um, Tamale Central. We just gave an example of Tamale Central. So let's move to Tamale Central. I don't know if you can do the whole regime, the whole <laughs> this and <laughs> thing, but let's come to Tamale Central. Tamale Central, um, we've had um, a new MP and we had an outgoing MP who was um, this and, um, on our Minister of State. Yeah, so um, let, we are going to, here we are trying to do two plus one because then you have two people and then mm. you have one person. So um, looking at the success of Minister of State as a road minister, um, for I think the whole eight years in, in, in government, right? Or no, I think for four, four years, four I'm years, okay. Term. Yeah, room for four years. Um, and, and also, um, like Salim said, when he doubles up a minister, probably he can actually fulfill some form of duties. Mm. So, can we can we say that about Taman Central that the Inusa did very well as a minister and as a legislature? Uh, I think that we have to, as I said, I do not have fine yeah. details of some yeah. of the things but generally okay. speaking yes when you look at what he has done uh, over the years yes he has done very well but i think that he's one of the smartest politicians that we have in tamale <laughs> how so when you listen to the reason why he decided not to contest he yes. said he has lost touch with his people okay and it wasn't because I'm, I'm even sure that he would have still won if he had contested yeah but just that the margin would have diminished so much yeah. you understand so he's one of the smartest politicians we have in Tamale okay. and his decision not to contest is, is commendable okay. because I mean you have to leave uh, whilst <laughs> there's still some applause left for you. Yes. So he, that was a smart decision. Okay. And his role in parliament, no one can question it. He has done very well, though uh, recently his comments, you know, <laughs> was kind of disappointing. But like Salim said, we don't want to talk about that for now. It's still in process. <laughs> we are yeah. still processing that one. Yeah, we are assessing his performance <laughs> yes. and all that. Yes. So definitely, and when you look at his constituents' response to him yeah. over the last election, yeah. he realized that, as he said, he has lost touch with the people. Yeah. And when we talk about development in our setting, sometimes it is not just about uh, putting up structures or you know something that has to do with the way the MPs relate with the constituents. Yes, yes, yes. And when you look at what happened to uh, Dr. Okobo <laughs> and the comments that are coming up, you understand yes. that I, I, it is not I, just about. Uh, in in a way, in yes. a way, you can't give me Gary without all your life. You actually need to have all your life. Yes, what do you want to do with that? In his case, people are complaining that he used not to attend weddings, attend funerals, so, and all yes. that. But for me and you sitting down here, we might not see to be anything. But for them, or for those people, it means a lot to them. Wouldn't you want to have, you are from Tamale North, right? Wouldn't you want to have um, Suhini come to maybe your, 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 your this thing, your naming ceremony, your wedding, or your, your funeral? I mean, I mean... Wouldn't it, it be a plus? A plus in which way? Like, which it should be good if he comes, but if he doesn't come, I'm not, I'm not going to take it. Uh, <laughs> when I was when I was doesn't know me. You understand? I don't know him. So if he doesn't come to my wedding or this thing, I'll not be okay. hurt in any way. All right. But I don't. Uh, that is the problem we have with our people. Mm. We demand for the wrong things. We demand for what we think we want. But at the end of the day, we vote for. We vote them out based on our actual needs. People okay. come to your weddings. You forget to ask them about the road. You forget <laughs> to ask them about the portable drinking water and all that. Yeah. By the end of the day, you go and vote them out. All right. Meanwhile, we are demanding for the wrong things. things. Yes. So when it comes to uh, Inu Safisini yeah. and his smart move and the things he has done for his constituents, I think he, he believes that he has done enough okay. and it's time for him to take a rest and probably pursue other uh, ambitions. So, all right.
I think okay. I'm okay with uh, this. We will still come back to you on Inusa. Salim, Inusa Fisayi. Inusa Fisayi, largely, his tenor has been a huge success. Okay. On the legislative front, he's been excellent. If you take a look at uh, the processes leading to the passing of uh, the special, special prosecutor's act, yeah. he made tremendous inputs yeah. in that regard. And then if you come to what I'll call the secondary responsibility, okay. that is a basic development yeah. within the constraints. Yeah. I think he's done fairly well. Okay. Yeah. In terms of accessibility, accessibility has been one okay. of his weakest yeah. area. 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 Yeah. And then you can pardon him for that. Yeah. Okay. okay. He was the head of one of the busiest ministries in the country, yeah. Rose and Highways. Yeah. An MP, part of cabinet, you can get time time yeah. to constantly visit uh, the constituency, yeah. and that's one area I think as a people we have to speak about. Okay. It's either we want our MPs to come for our naming ceremonies, <laughs> our, <laughs> our funerals, or we want them to go and work for us, or want them to right. go and work for us. Yes, I think in a way MPs have. That kind of social obligation yeah. towards their constraints. Yeah. Once or once you are free and then you are within the constraints, you can come around. Those social gatherings you yeah. can come around. Yeah. But that shouldn't be the focus on which we uh, judge them. Yeah. Okay. But it appears in this part of in Ghana, largely. In Ghana, in Ghana, yeah. Ghana that's what even southern Ghana, yeah. some families before they vote for MPs, they bring their funeral book. Look, yes. The donation book they open. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, that this person can the MP came, how much did he contribute? <laughs> they look at that before they make a decision. <laughs> Thank God the government will have a funeral. <laughs> we have, we have it in memory. It, we have it in memory. <laughs> and we take those things. You interact with some people and then they say, I'm not voting for this MP. You ask why. We had a naming ceremony in our house and we invited him in the Okay. okay. Alright. Most of the constituents don't bother to actually take an interest in the inputs their MPs making making parliament Probably at the national level at the national level yeah. even there are some MPs on the floor of parliament they don't speak yes. but you go to the committee levels and the kind of work they do mm. you'll be marveled but is it is it that the MPs the people behind the MP like the closer to the MP is it that they are not communicating that to the grassroots people because I, how many times do they watch TV Especially at parliamentary sessions. So, probably they don't know what their MP is doing. They only see what the media will give them on TV once in a while, but they don't see the actual work. So, is it that there is a block in communication on, of what the MP is doing at the national level to the people? Like, because I think they, they, if you really want them to know that you are doing work at the national level as an MP, I think you owe it to the people to let them know how and where you are going to get it. I, I'm just thinking. Because if you are doing work at the national level, in the, um, how would I say, community level and all that, and I'm not, see, I'm not feeling it, I'm just going to tell you, I'm, I, I don't see the impact. So do you think we owe them communication to that? The MPs owe? No, not exactly. Okay. Take a look at this, this, this scenario. Throughout this campaigning period, Yes. which of the campaigns was focused on the ability of the individual candidates? To be, uh, to be good uh, lawmakers. lawmakers. None. Even the platforms the media gave them. Questions that were asked wasn't in relation to making, to making, making law. laws and, so, and passing them. So the media also have no responsibility? The media has a responsibility. Largely, our communities, we are uneducated when it comes to what an MP should do. do. Yes. This person thinks an MP is supposed to come for the wedding. This person thinks an MP is supposed to construct the bridge in my area. This person thinks an MP is supposed to give me chop money. We have divided view when it comes to what, what an, MP an MP does. But, okay. The, as the, all these problems start from the very onset of campaign, you understand? Yeah. When you go to the people, what do you tell them? You understand? Mm -hmm. They don't know about constitution. They don't know about what MPs are supposed to do. So what they expect of you is what you've told them. But you put the expectations 
I mean, on yourself. You tell them that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. You understand? And the politicians are wise. They speak different language when they meet different categories of people. <laughs> when you go to meet people, maybe in an elite area or people who are educated, you speak differently. Okay. And when you go to, I mean, to a rural community, yeah. you speak differently. Different, yeah. So you have people having different expectations of the MP. Okay. So we, I think that much of the blame has to be put on the MPs in this regard. Yeah. And the issue is that when you go and tell them that I mean, per the constitution, yeah. this is what I'm supposed to do. You will not get even one vote. No, what, what, I'm trying because, to say, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, like, nowadays we have social media, right? Now, so if you're a part of a community that passed something into law, probably you can communicate that on your social media. Because they are, although not all the electorates are on social media, but at least some of them are there and they can attest. That's just what I would like. So we don't know some of, some MPs are there, they are not ministers, but we don't know which communities they are even in, but, into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe once they were communicating that, we've seen that in the U.S. election. Um, we've seen like um, Congress members saying that, oh, we're able to pass social and so law, we've been trying this, this, and this. they communicate that out. And they say, you don't need to go to a radio station and do that. You can just use your smartphone and come live and say, okay, we've been able to pass the toilet bill now, you don't need to defecate outside. I, I, yeah, you, you, I don't know whether my point is... I get, I get I your point, but then, that's why I said uh, you have to talk differently to different people. people. If okay. you come and tell me this, I will appreciate what you've done. Yes. But if you go and tell someone who is not educated or who probably when you went to, yeah. you told them that you are going to work on their wood. Yeah. And now you are coming to tell me that I've participated in this committee and we're able to... Do, you understand? So it depends on the people you are talking to. Okay. You understand? And that yeah. is why I think... We need to all promote education in this country. Yeah. All right. we, it has to get to a point that we hold our uh, MPs uh -huh. by what I mean they are supposed to Did do, okay. and not necessarily I mean the sweet talk they come and give us. Okay. And when you look at the results, the number of MPs who have lost, even ministers. <laughs> yes, yes. It should, it should, I mean I think that we are getting there gradually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sally, you are weighing on that. I think. Uh, you, you talked about the MPs not communicating. Yes. Well, I think as constituents, part of the blame lies on us. Okay. Parliamentary hands out is, is a public document. Document. Okay. How many of us even try to get it and read? How many of us even know where the parliament is? I don't know where the parliament is. You see the problem. The new one and the old one. Yeah, <laughs> committee, <laughs> com at the committee levels, yeah. there are reports. They are public documents. Yeah, but we don't even make an attempt to, to get them. To get them. Okay. You can easily access it online. But okay. we don't make an attempt. An attempt. Parliamentary sittings is streamed online. Okay. We don't make an effort to watch or listen. People are data. <laughs> that's not that, that's not, that, that shouldn't be an excuse. Okay. <laughs> This what you are talking about is maybe for people like you or myself so, who are yeah. interested, interested in yeah. So but we for should, the, yeah, yeah, we should. For the ordinary that. person, he doesn't yeah. care. Okay. He doesn't want to. I mean, he wants to see that. Oh, you said I'll get light. I should be getting yeah. light. He doesn't care about okay. elementary hazard or whatever oh. we are talking about. Okay. That's why I said that what they tell the people when they go to campaign is what they judge them by, yeah. not the the constitution and. <laughs> Yes. And sometimes, in relation to that, yes. you see the politician is, the politician will always tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. And they'll judge my The so politician will always tell you what you want to they hear. Begin to they'll come and sit down, you list your needs to, uh, for them and then. They'll repeat the same thing to you and then, and then leave. <laughs> so, so I think one of the yeah. best ways to solve this problem is education. Yes, that's why I said. Okay. So that when your MP comes to tell you that I'm going to construct this room, in your mind, you are wondering how he's going to get the money. <laughs> so you, you question him. Okay. You understand? Yeah. And then now, because there's now there's so much money being poured into politics, yeah. we are having people using their personal wealth, using their personal connections and all that to do, this. To do certain things in communities. Yeah. And then from uh, I mean afar, other people are expecting their you know yeah. MPs it's or to PCs also to also do that. Yeah. So we are having that kind of confusion no, no, they look at what Farouk has done here look at what Anta has done here look at what uh, Haruna has done here and you haven't done that you are personally they are not wealthy or you know they don't have the connections they don't do have that. to do that 
and more to the point that is not their duty okay. so we are not having a confusion as to what their, what duty their duties are is and what they can do, do. What they can do. because okay. we've seen that some of the pieces are going the extra mile yeah and they are doing so because they have the means okay no they are not supposed to yeah so that expectation is then transferred Let's onto see. others who do not have oh, that uh, resources, resources. Okay. so now we are having a serious uh, problem with some of our pieces all right we are judging them wrongly okay yes Sally. Yeah. now let's get now we've we've touched a bit on um honorable minister in your service now let's come to honorable mutala from nanto to tamale central what are our expectations of him as a legislature and the three four percent in development what should we expect him? especially especially when his opponent has created a national unemployment program right <laughs> or a youth employment program in the Minako. do you think there will be pressure on him if you monitor Mutele's campaign i don't think there will be that, pre- that much pressure on him okay and it will be dependent on whether his party is able to form government or not. All right. All right. If his party is able to form government, there will be so much pressure on him. That won't be a doubt. Okay. But if his party is not able to form government, I don't think I think there will be less pressure on him because he would have time to visit of often. Yeah. And do the little he can. And do the little he can. If you monitor his campaign. It was just door to door. He would come in and sit with you and talk to you. Talk to you. Okay. He didn't make those big promises. Big promises. Okay. I'll I'll send you to school. No. Okay. It was just about connecting with, with the people. people. Okay. Sharing in their plight. Okay. So once he's able to continue that, I don't think okay. he would have any problem. Okay. Okay. And on the legislative front, Mutara is Mutara. Mutara is Mutara. He, yeah. he, he will definitely when, when he was um mp for nanto he he was most of the people there most of the young people there had some nice things to share about him when i went there recently um yeah, but let's talk about his original job that's the job of an mp not the building of the schools in the community of the mp do you think um in parliament he was a good legislature i think so Okay. Because knowing who Mutala is, Mutala is, he's an intelligent man. You can't take that away from him. Okay. Uh-huh. And representing the people of Nanto, I, I think he, he did that very well. Uh-huh. I've always held the view that he lost Nanto not because he failed as an MP. MP. Okay. But because he failed to manage his interpersonal uh, relationship with, uh, with, the with, with, with the people. Okay. All right. All right. So if he's able to work on that, Tamil Central wouldn't be that much of a difficulty for him. So per, per estimation, how many times do you think he will go for Tamil Central? Tamil Central is an urban constituency, so I think two times would be okay for him. Two times would be yeah. okay for him. And Nato, how many times did he do in Nato? I think one, 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 one time. One. Okay. All right. All right. Um, mm. what do you think of him? Let's start with as a legislature first. Well, as you said, when you listen to Honorable Mutala, uh, you are, I mean, there's no way you will not be impressed when it comes to the job he's supposed to do mm. in parliament, yeah, and the way he's able to articulate his views. He's very brave, he has that ability to, you know. Uh, stand for what he believes in and that is what I think Parliament is all about no. so when it comes to his duties in Parliament no one can uh, you know argue. Can argue about that mm. now when it comes to uh, leadership, leadership as he said leadership is, is about having the ability to manage and uh, you know certain interpersonal relationships okay someone might never get one CD from you but the way you behave towards the person would uh, I mean would be something that the person really appreciates. It. Okay. So as to whether uh, his, you know, inability to manage his constituents, yeah. whether it's actually something that is inherent in him or it was just a mistake, a mistake that is yet to be seen in his, you know, term, uh, as, term as MP for in Tamar Central. Central. Okay. Whether we'll be seeing similar, uh, you know, 
incidents or yeah. not. That yeah. is something we can, you know, uh, try to see. Okay. But as to whether he is going to be, a, I mean, someone who is going to make impact in Parliament, yeah. that there's no question about that. He's yeah. going to be a good uh, MP, okay. and he has been a good MP. Okay. But as to whether the his, leadership, the leadership in his constituents okay. will be, you know, appreciated, okay. that is something we, we, we wait look to forward see. to it. Okay. I personally was rooting for. Uh, Dr. Barham Anyas to be the MP. I okay. think he has done marvelous, really well. And when you look at the campaign messages and the things he has done, yeah. I think he would have been a better MP for Tamil Central. Would have been a better. Yes, if he was okay. given the chance. But okay. here we have it as Mutala being the MP. MP. So we only hope that he is able to deliver for Tamil Central. Tamil Central. Yes. Okay. And when it comes to developments on Mutala's part. The little, the three, four percent development we are looking <laughs> at. So, um, given his, um, for people in Nantong who are not partisan, they said he did so much well in Nantong, especially in the communities around Nantong. Not necessarily Nantong itself, but the communities around Nantong. Um, do you think same results will be replicated, given that um, t um, Central is an urban city, so there will be no schools to go? But there are some other things that he will be doing. Do you think that he will be successful in that area? Well, we we, we looking at his record uh, at Nantong. I think we should be hopeful that he is able to do something. But when you look at, as uh, my brother here said, yeah. Tamil Central is an urban uh, constituency. Yeah. So what he has to focus on is probably job creation, skills development for the youth, okay. and all that. So if he's able to do that, I think that. He will be able to, you know, retain his seat. But if he's not able to do that, and and when I look at the dynamics of the politics in Northern Region or in Tamale, yeah. uh, you know, some of the constituencies, yeah. they are solidly behind certain political parties. Yeah. It has to take someone to do a lot, <laughs> you know, to be able to convince one person to to vote yeah. for. Them. Yeah. Other than that, uh, Dr. Anyas would have won the seat already. Already. Yeah. You understand. Okay. So. We have some people who are just loyalists of a certain political party, yeah. and no matter what you do for them or whether you feel them or not, if they even if they don't come out to vote for you, they will not come out at all to vote. vote. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So I think that if he does something little, they will be able to retain him. Yes. Okay. All right. Salim, would you want to touch on that? Because I know he, he, yeah, he yeah, mentioned yeah. Bahama being the best. So I, I, I think um, Mutala is the best choice they could have made <laughs> okay if you monitored their campaign yes brahma was a bit too loud all right i think he came out with a manifesto yes like we're discussing he just sat kept something together and then assumed mm -hmm. that the That's people wanted that would buy into it yes and looking at the nature of Tamil Central, Tamil Central is urban. Yeah. A large number of them are educated. educated. So you can't just sit and then come and throw promises at them and then they you expect them, them to just buy into to, it. To, 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 to buy it already. No. Yeah. That wouldn't be possible. Yeah. For Tamilis, a constituency like Tamil Central, there are three key things you can do to get them visibility, accessibility, and then human development. Oh, yes. Those are the three key things. And on those three fronts, Bahama failed. Not until the start of active campaign. campaign. Visibility was Bahama was largely missing in the constituency. And that was the time Mutala was feeling in, in his door to door campaign. Exactly. And you can't get Tamar Center without being visible and accessible. No. Okay. That can happen. Alright. And yes, Bahama was in a way fortunate that he was heading one of uh, NAPCO. Yes. Unemployment agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting Tamale Central on the focus. What special thing did he do for Tamale Central instead of Napo? Well, that's a big question. During his campaign, was he able to say, okay, fine, I came to individual households, I asked for graduates to be, to be submitted so that they could be enrolled no, onto Napo? He, he, he doesn't have that record. See. And Mutala, all, during all those periods, was there for the okay. people. Though he had virtually nothing. But he was there. He was there. He was accessible and visible to them. He made the people understand that, look, 
as it stands now, I have nothing. But I am with you in your suffering. Okay. Right. And when they died, Philips, we enjoy it together. <laughs> and the people I bought into his message. I, think I, I would have to respond to some of the claims that he made. <laughs> okay. To say that to say that the people of Thomas Central did not buy into yes. the message of uh, Mama, Mama is not accurate. Okay. When you look at the, the, the votes he pulled yes. as compared to 2016, yes. you can see phenomenal uh, increment. Yes. So to say that the people did not buy into his message is actually not true. So we can say fully did them buy into the message. That's why I said that there are certain constituencies that are strongholds of certain political yeah. parties. Okay. You understand? Yes. And some of them are loyalists. You understand? So no matter what you do, and I'm sure the elite he's talking about, there are those who actually bought into the message of Dr. Dr. Barham. <laughs> you understand? There are people who will tell you that if I vote for this particular party, my ancestors will catch me. You understand? No matter what the person does for them. And to talk about whether he was he was very visible. To say yeah. that Anyas wasn't visible is not is not true. Okay. The mm -hmm. dot dot campaign was there for everyone to see. So okay. to say that he wasn't visible, and what, and when we talk about the, the development he has brought to Tamil Central, yes. the funds, uh, I mean the, uh, I the fund that. he created, yes. and the loans he has given to people, yes. and the number of people he has brought under NAPCO, yes. is something for everyone to see, not only in Tamil Central. Yes. So to say, but that was it communicated to the people of Tamil Central, especially? Of course, it was communicated. That is why you see. That's why I said there has been a phenomenal increment. Okay. When uh, in 2016, I think Honorable Minister led him by about uh, 13,000 13, votes. Yes. How, how many votes did Honorable uh, Mutha lead him? About 7,000 votes. So you can see an increment in that regard. So okay. to say that the people do not buy into his. Uh, you know his policies Policy. or his manifesto okay. is not accurate. All right, I think let, let's 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 pause this argument. Um, tomorrow the ladies will do that argument. <laughs> Kisma and um, Lisa Abagre will do that yeah. argument tomorrow. Let's <laughs> leave that for the ladies. Some things are meant for women yeah. alone. <laughs> let's 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 come to my uncle's place. My uncle, the whole Ghana, he's the special uncle I have. <laughs> ABFC. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come to ABFC. Salim. ABFC. ABFC <laughs> has been and will be one of the finest MPs Sanar would ever have. Uh, one of the finest would ever have. Would ever have. Why is that? If you look at both his primary and secondary responsibilities. He has delivered beyond expectation. Okay. Yes. I think he's just been a victim of uh, communication. <laughs> I think he does that so well. He's a communicator. All right. He's <laughs> yes. a an excellent one. Yes. But what he does is not being communicated well to the to people. people. Okay. Right. Just take your cameras and go into some local constraints. Not Sanarwa Township. Yes. Go to the communities. communities. Go to the schools. The clinics. You see his footprint dotted around those communities. Okay. But communicating it to the people, he hasn't done that. I think he, he believed fairly that once he's doing his job, the people will see it and then appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. His opponents took the media and then turned everything against him. Against him. And it we'll sounded like ABFC did virtually nothing as an MP. <laughs> <laughs> I can't count the number of school buildings AB has, has built. Bu built and then renovated. Dual desk. I can't count them. So that had, so like you said. Communication was one of his main problems. Was, his, was one of his main problems. But he had airtime more than most of the MPs. <laughs> uh, 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 that is one thing about him. If he's on set, it's not about his constituency. It's about the NDC in general. He's on the national level, so when he's on set, it's about NDC and the yeah. national staffs. 
It's not always about his constituents. So that means he should begin to choose where to speak about the national one and also about his constituents. Not speaking about it personally. I think if he had a team in place that was meant to, to, to work on that. Propagate yeah. his, his works. I think virtually almost all the MPs in Tamale had it. Tamale Central, Tamale, Tamale South, Tamale North. North yeah. It was only it was only him. him yeah. He, you, could, you, 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 you could go on social media and then you won't see anyone talking about talking about ABFC you know, or projecting what he has done. Well, they projected his proverbs. <laughs> the, pro, the, the proverb was national, <laughs> so it was there for everyone to, to, to see. But his actual works wasn't proven. It was so hard to see it on social media. Social media yes, honestly, I think yesterday I was trying to set him. When we were going to publish one of the stories with him and Abukara and Lucy from Abukara, yeah. And if you Google ABF Sini or say ABF on Facebook, Facebook, all you can see is the poems and the, the current, the most uh, like shared one was after his win. He said that the calculated attempt of it this <laughs> day. <laughs> and see, and see, during this contest, people were worried that he, he, he might lose. Yes. I said, yes, the election it may be close. Felicia will do well. Yeah. But there is no way Felicia will be able to beat AB. Yeah. Not just because San Narago is a comfortable place for uh, the, NDC. the NDC. But AB had tens to point to in every single community he visited. Okay. I think one area too he needed to uh, set up was his accessibility and then visibility. visibility okay. And sometimes some of them you can't entirely blame them. They have a duty at the national they level. They have a duty at the national level. So they need a team to work in their constituencies. In their constituencies. Okay. All right. But but in, in, in one way or the other, would you also say that um he has done two terms so far, is it three? Since his creation, yes. he's been the MP. I think this this would be his third term. Yes. This would be his third term. Yes. Is there a possibility of a fourth term in 2024? I think in a way he has indicated that he's not coming back. How has he? I, I haven't seen that. I can't confirm it, but I've seen new uh, news reports to the fact that he's not coming back. He's not coming back. Would and personally, if I'm to offer any suggestion, I'll tell him not to come, come back. back. He served and he served well. Would you be sad to see him to see him leave? Yes, I'll be sad. It's like it's kind of difficult to picture Sanarbu without even <laughs> not just Sanarbu, our parliament. Uh, yeah, and that's one area we are losing as a country. Okay, we have most of our experienced uh, parliamentarians living in the house, yeah. not because they don't have work to do yeah. in the house, but because they have one or two problems in their uh, consequences. Yeah, I think in, in advanced democracies, they have a way. They protect those experience. Those experienced people. Mm. So that means Ghana has to work on that as well. Ghana has to work on that. We have to work on that. Um. um anyway. Um. Wumpini, Sanalu, my uncle if you've seen. Yes. That they calculated blood. The silence something, of the blood. The silence of the blood. It's not been mistaken as cowardice. Cowardice. But it's a calculated attempt. So accuracy or something. Yeah. Wow. It's only my uncle who can put the Ghana <laughs> proverbs into <laughs> English and you understand it properly. Yes. Yeah. What do you think about Sanargu? Well, Sanargu uh, is becoming like Tamale Central, okay. where ABF is, you know, gradually losing touch with his people. Right. When you look at, I mean, look at the election numbers. Look at what uh, I think Honorable Habib got in 2016 or so. Yeah. And compare it compare it to uh, what uh, Felicia got. got. You know that the people are gradually trying to, you know, trying a different path. Right. You understand? Yeah. I'm sure it is part of the reasons why he has, you know, decided not to go for a fourth term. Ten. So you see that we are we are having we are now having very sophisticated voters. Yeah. When they try you for a very long time, they want to try another, another person. person. So as I said, sometimes you cannot fully assess the. Yeah. The constituency, but you have to look at the, the voting vote. pattern. Yeah. That will tell you, I mean, the views of the people. Okay. And looking against at what you are seeing. Against what you are seeing, and look at looking at the fact that in 2016 the NPP could even win a, a single polling station. Yeah. To being able to win 44 polling stations, stations. that is a massive uh, improvement. improvement. 
So if ABF is saying he's coming back in 2024, that should tell you that the battle is going to be tougher for him. Okay. So I do not, as I said, I do not have the final details of his work, yeah. but per the election results, yes. you see that he's lo losing touch with his people. Okay. The people are looking for a different path. Wow. And then uh, uh, Mrs. or Madame Felicia yeah. seem to have been the person to provide that right. alternative for them. Okay. And that is why you see that a lot of people uh, were towing her direction. Exactly. And if it continues, she is going to be able to snatch the seat from NDC. NDC. Yes. Okay, now let's, let's... Okay, you want to add something. You see, to be fair to... Uh, ABF Sini and then uh, Honorable Abdi. Yeah. This election was an interesting election. A very different one. Oh, wow. If you look at the resources Felicia had access to, Habib didn't have it. Habib didn't have that. Yeah. Habib had virtually nothing. Okay. okay. I'm of the view that if Habib had the resources Felicia had, he could have done better than Felicia. Felicia. Okay. Yes. Because he has won um, Tolo. Tolo. Okay. So this is like, you see, uh, even Tamal Central. Yes. Wumpini talked about the margin of win uh, Mutalaha. Yeah. If you look at the resources that was pumped into Tamal Central, aside the NAPO, NAPO. the resources that was pumped into the constituency, they say money stops nonsense. <laughs> it truly does. Yes. <laughs> it does. Someone may be a loyalist of a party. But mm. tell me, I need to take that Ma Money is money. <laughs> <laughs> I need to take it. It's not coming again unless four years. Money, uh. money is money. And some people are very faithful. The moment <coughs> they take the money, they will have to vote. Exactly. Money. money is money. So this election, money will, money played a key role. Was it a good thing or a bad thing? A very bad. It was a very bad thing. Okay. I think one of the popular phrases in this year's election was Ayaluna. Yes. What was Ayaluna? <laughs> I, okay, I, I know it to be something has fallen. It was money. Ayaluna was money. Money. Okay. Money being doled out to people. As simple as that. And I think it had a song to it, right? Yes. It had a song to no, it. Ayaluna had to do with the COVID relief. Yeah. Relief. Yes. But it became a, a political vehicle. vehicle. We can't run away from that. Yeah. It became a political vehicle. It was not meant for the uh, parliamentary candidates to be dispersed. Okay. By most of the constituencies, the applications had to pass through, through those pieces. Piece. And it's worked for them. Wow. If you look at the voting pattern in Tamil Central, yes. people voted for uh, Brahma okay. in certain constituencies and voted for John. John. Because in a truly, truly, they are NDC loyalists. Yes. But, but Brahma had given them money. money. So yes, on a personal level, I because of the money you've given me, I'll vote for you, but I'm not betraying my party entirely. Do you think that Northerners have that? Somebody said that Northerners have just knack of, like, you do me good, I will, I will repay you good. You do me bad, I will repay you bad. And that is the kind of voting party they did this year. Like those who reach out to them, candidates who reach out to them on a personal note, they actually voted for them. Candidates who reached out and give them money, some of them voted for them. Yes, some of them didn't. didn't. So, it's actually sad and, and a dangerous thing for our democracy. Okay. For young people like us, what it tells us is that no matter how good you are, you need, you need to find money before you be able to represent your people at that level. And I think that is what Habib was able to do in Tolo. That is what Habib was able to do in Tolo. <laughs> that is what Anta was able to do in Karaga. Karaga. Um, Tampuli. Tampuli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ayaba. Ayaba yeah. Even Tamil Central, the voice Bahama was able to get. Was due to that. Was due to that. If you look at his campaign. You cannot say no, if, you, if you look at his campaign. The money, in the last election. His contest with uh, Lawrence yeah. FC. Yeah. His campaign was a bit more compelling and convincing than this year's one. Yeah, some people actually said that. But he was beaten by 13,000, a huge margin. So the money came in. One thing was out. missing the money. The money. And the money. Came this year he had the money. money. But missed out in the entire. Because the reason why I'm agreeing with you is that, for our an analysis, mm -hmm. the people who are like, we like Bahama. But on a personal note, we are not getting that vibe we had in 2016. In that is what we got at the Thomas Central when we're doing our overview and all that. 
So, and some of us even saying that we should expect a bitter challenge if the count and Bahama doesn't win, it's going to be a bit shaky. That's what he said, given that what happened in 2016, like that hurt. But this time around, he gave up quickly and like congratulated on Abu Mutala. So, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm just saying that, I'm just affirming what you are saying. I'm not actually a supporter, I can't pick it, so I'm only affirming what you are saying. But I know you are going to do a comeback. But let's talk about, we are always coming back to Tamai Central. I want the ladies to do that. Let's talk about my uncle, personally. We are going to finish up on my uncle. We are like less than 10 minutes together. So, my uncle, first of all, will not be coming for 2024. 20, yeah. Would Felicia be a good legislature? Should she be voted? in par to parliament yes let's start with you so let's just assume that if michael is coming if michael is not coming felicia will win let's assume that yes. because we know felicia um when it comes to the what's the name the school feeding thing and all that mm -hmm. she actually used that to also capitalize on his campaign her campaign he used that would you say that if felicia comes in if she's a guest to parliament he'll be a good legislature well, we've seen the three percent of community work. Well, so um, I don't know what you mean by she used the feeding grant or whatever to capitalize on. We are not being political here. We are just being realistic. How can you be speaking politics <laughs> and saying we are not being political? <laughs> okay, all right. Let's, so I don't know uh, what okay, you mean I'm by retracting that. that. So, uh, I'm retracting that. I'll retract but, uh, that. To your question yes. as to whether she should be a good uh, legislator, yes. uh, legislator in uh, in parliament, yes. I think there's no doubt about that. House. I think that uh, what 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 are the qualities that a person need to be able to you know be able to help in parliament? First of all, you have to be articulate. Mm -hmm. You have to be bold, mm -hmm. and you, you need to have an understanding of the issues. Okay. Okay. And Felicia is someone who who, who has that uh, all those qualities. Mm -hmm. You should be able to speak on issues. You should be able to you know debate issues when they come. The the thing about being educated is that you don't have to know everything. But in the face of the facts or the information, we should be able to make meaningful impacts, okay. meaningful contributions. And Felicia is in, I mean, the right position to do that. So if she comes in 2014, uh, 2024, yeah. she becomes the MP for Sanargo. She's going to be excellent in uh, Parliament. I don't see any doubts about that. Okay. Yes. On a lighter note, if she goes to Parliament, who will cook for her, cook for her when it comes to Tamale? Who do I? Who cook for her, cook for her Why is she run away from Tamale? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> because there's, there's that um, there's a rumor about she being the only one preparing food for Kufadu when it comes to Tamil. So you are the only one uh, spreading that rumor. I'm oh, I'm the only one spreading yeah, that rumor. Okay, all right. Salim, will Felicia be a good legislator? I think I'll, I'll have to state this before I proceed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she doesn't have a top chance. <laughs> of becoming, of becoming <laughs> the MP was uh, uh, Okay, all right. Yes, but you can't take that away from uh, her. I've had few interactions with her. Okay. She's obviously a smart, intelligent uh, lady. Okay. And if she ever gets the opportunity to yeah. be a member of parliament, I think she will do well. She will do well. Yeah. If she ever gets the opportunity, which you think she, she would, would not get, <laughs> maybe she, she she may decide to go to a different constraint. But not Sanago. As far as Sanago is concerned, I don't see this ever happening. Yeah, okay, well, let's see what the lion will do in 2024. <laughs> Whether he's calculated that it will work or will not. Let's see. Now let's um, Tamale Central, Tamale South, Sanago. Let's go to Tamale North. I think we will stop in Tamale North. We don't have much time. Tamale North. Um, so him, what do you make of him as a legislator? So he, he's my MP. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know you are going to there will be some favoritism here, right? No, no. I'll just speak to the facts. Okay. So he but he's also from Tamale North, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so he has been <laughs> excellent. Legislator. Okay. And considering the fact that he went to parliament when his party was out of government, Makadu. and the work he's been able to to do to accomplish, I think he's he's been excellent. Okay. We we've got it right as a constituency. Constituency. All right. All right. 
And what about the three four percent um, development? How would you say about that? If you look at this, just this last two three years, yeah. Sweeney has had a bit of friction with um, Maria. Maria, yes. Yes, the DC for Sala. The DC for Sala, because yeah. Sweeney has had has had calls to complain publicly about him not getting access to his common fund. Okay. And sometimes the projects he initiates and then the districts will come in later paying credit for it. Okay. And then there's been that friction and I think that aside he has done fairly, fairly well. well. Um, yes, I, I know about this Build, friction. Building of clinics. Uh, chip compound, oh, sorry, yeah. school blocks, paying of school fees, okay. accessibility, okay. visibility. So in so far so good. So far so good. So far so good. His friction with um, the San, the San Argo DC, it's, um, the municipal director. Um, is it based on partisan or is just like work friction? I think it's been it's based on that partisanship. Okay. All right. All right. And at the end of the day, do you think that um, Sanaru and Tamari Lofa are actually benefiting from this um, um, this, thing, this fight because they are all trying to take credit for development? Do you think the people are benefiting? <laughs> Who benefits from fights? <laughs> I don't think the people are benefiting from okay. that. Okay. All right. I will just employ on the MC. Yeah. If she gets the opportunity to be reappointed again, yeah. would he? Would she be reappointed? I don't know. I'm not for <laughs> <laughs> And do you think she, she should be reappointed? Given reappointed yeah, by by Abu Fadu. Abu Fadu is not forming the next government, so yeah, yeah, I remember. I don't that. see that happening. Yes, <laughs> I remember. That. I remember that. Um, uh, Wumpini, mm. honourable Sohini. Yes. Good legislature, bad legislature. What do you think? Um, when it comes to his duties um, as an MP in Parliament, yeah, I think that he has done fairly well. Fairly yeah, well. Yes, he has been very articulate. But sometimes he seems uh, to uh, I don't know how to put it, but if you are going to use that word. What should you use? Um, I don't know whether is is it Hausa? There is some uh, kind of Takashi behavior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like he yeah. sometimes shows. Uh, I will not say arrogant, but he's, sure. Of. He, not sure, but his opposition to certain things are. Um, I don't know the right way to use. Okay. But he has been he has been good as an MP, yeah. but sometimes the way he opposes things. I mean, whether, whether you agree with things or not, the role of Parliament is to bring about development. Yeah. But you shouldn't do it in such a way that it will strain certain relationships in parliament. Okay. But he has been in that kind of behavior. Some would describe it as rude or arrogant. But I think he can work uh, in that regard. Yeah. But as to the you know um, work in his constituency, yes. I have had people, even members of uh, NDC, complaining that he's not accessible to them and that some of the things he told them he would do, he has not done it. Okay. So I think that, I mean, looking at uh, the results, and looking at what people are saying, so, yeah. though some of them are dissatisfied with him, yeah. a lot more people still want him to be in parliament. parliament. So I would say that per the results and per what is happening, he has done fairly well, yeah. and that is why he has been returned to parliament. parliament. Okay. I believe in the people, when they want you, it means that you are doing something they like, yeah. Okay. The moment they don't want you, no matter what you do, they take you out. They will take you out. So I okay. think that he has done fairly well right. for the people of Tamil North. Okay. And would you think he will come back in 2024? 24. I don't see him not coming back. I think he hasn't uh, made that statement. statement yeah. But I still believe that he will come back in 2024. Okay. All right. Um, Sally, Tamil North 2024. Will Honorable Sohini come back? I hope so. You hope so? Yeah. Why? So, so far, he's been an excellent legislator. Would you say he's unlucky in a way, given yeah. that he's in parliament, but his government is still not in power? 
Oh. He has been, he has been unlucky, but this time around he, he's lucky because he's his lucky. government is from his, his party is forming another government. Okay. Yeah. I forgot to comment on that. <laughs> no, we are not going to comment on that. We are not. Just I don't. I, I, we we we, we, now we, now we saw. To be like I forgot. <laughs> we saw we saw what happened to Munti. <laughs> <laughs> this time we will be set at the number three. The streets of Taman is going to change presidential results. Okay, um, we are ending here. It's almost one hour. The time we are ending here. Thank you very much for coming, guys. Um, I'm most grateful. <laughs>